It's always been my opinion that one of the problems progressives have is that they can't look more than one move ahead in the game. They seem to think that everything's static. Society's static. Human beings are static. The economy is static. And they can make their changes and make their adjustments and do their calculations using basically analysis that's static in nature and think they'll get the results that they expect. And what usually happens is they don't. You know, classic example of this was back in the Clinton years when he decided that, you know, they needed more money. The government always needs more cash. So one way to get it was, you know, tax luxury boats, yachts. And, you know, who's going to who's going to feel bad for rich people having to pay more for their yachts? So you have this yacht industry. They're selling X number of yachts and will, you know, hit this heavy tax on it. And then we'll bring in all this money. That's static, a static analysis of the situation. What they didn't do was to go one step beyond that and say, well, if we start taxing yachts and the prices go up, might people's behaviors change, which is what occurred. They taxed American built yachts and people started buying their, their yachts and big expensive boats in Bermuda, Bahamas, or down in the Caribbean. So what happened? The American boat industry suffered uh, a disaster. And they went out of business, people lost their jobs, businesses shut down, and they actually brought in less tax revenue than before they raised the luxury boat tax. Eventually, I think they repealed it, but it was too late. The industries really never recovered. And we, when we see this happen time and again on them, you know, when they passed the, the soda tax in Philadelphia, oh, we're not doing it for people's health, we're doing it for income. But they didn't get the money they wanted because people, instead of buying here, you know, Philadelphia is kind of a long, narrow city. You can go over to Jersey, you can go to Bucks County, you can go out to Montgomery County, Chester County, you can drive, and you go do your shopping there. So not only did they not sell anywhere near as much uh, soda as they expected to collect these taxes, people were going instead of, you know, I can shop here, but well, maybe I'll just go out to Bucks County over here across the county line a couple miles away, I'll do my shopping there. So then they not only lose the money they're not getting on the, 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 pop revenue, but losing the sales tax they would have gotten had people shopped at the store in Philadelphia, which is city and county are one and the same. And, and they, they never seem to realize that people can adjust their behavior. And that's one of the problems that they have. This brings me to the case in, my case in point, and that's guns and the protection of your home. Now, not that long ago, I, I'm a registered gun owner. I have a weapon. I live in a house. There were riots where I live. About the first night, they were about 10 minutes away, 10 to 15 minutes away. The second night, they were 5 to 10 minutes away. Now, at this point, I'm starting to worry. They seem to be moving toward my neighborhood. What happens if they come into my neighborhood? What happens if I've got a, a bunch of protesters out there? Antifa, BLM, doesn't matter what they are. Rotary Club, I don't care. They're outside my house. As you come into our neighborhood, I'm pretty much where you come in at, and I'm on a corner. What if I find these people outside threatening to come into my house, threatening to do harm to the house, to, to myself and to Celine? What do I do? I've got a weapon. What's, what do I want to do? And my first thought was, well, first thing you do is you call the police. And that I would certainly do that. And I would do that today if it happened. Now, the problem is, you know, how likely are the police to come? Now, where I live, it's most likely it would be Hillsborough County Sheriff would come, although I'm technically in Tampa. Uh, it would be the Sheriff's Department would probably come. Would they come? Would they be overwhelmed elsewhere? Would they be able to come? Or if you look at some cities across the country, they won't even bother to come because they don't want to escalate, you know, a mostly peaceful protest. So they're just going to stay away. So basically you're on your own. And we've seen that time and again across this country over the last several months. But I, I would still call the police. You know, I, I would hope it would be a 911 call. They would have it on tape, record it. They would know that I attempted to call the police so that whatever happened afterwards would be put into that context. I at least tried. So I thought, what's the next thing I should do? Now, at the time I was thinking, okay, I've got this gun. It's got 
It's a pistol and it has a laser thing on it. So I said, I, I could step outside my door, point the gun at the ceiling. I'm not threatening anybody with it. So they can see that I'm armed and they can see the little dot on the ceiling. So we know it's not a toy. This thing's a real thing. And it's got a laser finder on it, which helps accuracy, especially at night. Put that little bead on somebody and you know you can see in the dark. And hopefully this would deter them. I mean, I don't want to shoot anybody. That's the last thing I ever want to have to do with this gun. I didn't, I, I'm 68 years old. I didn't get gunned till we were like 67. But I started getting worried. You know, there are a lot of break-ins and people, you know, coming into the house when people are in there in this area. And, you know, we were nervous. So I got one. But I don't want to shoot anybody. It's the last thing I want to do is, you know, at the end of my life, take somebody's life or even injure somebody with a gun. So what I hope this do, deter, you know, deterrence is a good strategy. Before you get to war, what do you want to do? What's normal strategic thinking, normal diplomatic thinking? It's better to deter the war, to deter an enemy from attacking you than it is to, to defeat him after he attacks you in a long bloody war where both people pay a price. Deterrence is a good thing, right? We deter people. We try to deter people all the time. You know, in some places, <laughs> places I've lived where they just, they take all broken down police cars and they clean them up and they just stash them there so it looks like there's a police presence. You know, that can deter people from speeding. It can deter people from, you know, committing crime. Let cops take their cruisers home and park them in front of their houses. In the neighborhoods they live in, people see that there's a police presence there. This is all to deter crime. I mean, it's great to catch and arrest a criminal, prosecute him and put him in jail, but isn't it even better to deter him from even committing the crime so that he doesn't have to go to jail, you don't have to pay for the trial and the lawyers and the incarceration and all those other things. It's better to deter always than to go past the point where deterrence won't work anymore. And then the third option would be to stay in the house and we'll let them come through. There's a place where I can sit. I've already figured everything out, you know, get my stash of ammunition and I can sit there. And in about a second and a half to two seconds, I can cover every entrance into the house and shoot anybody coming in. Now, that's the situation I was in. And that was my thinking. You know, call the police, try to deter, you know, go out, don't point the gun at anybody, you know, don't threaten them, you know, don't, don't aim it at them, just aim it at the ceiling, you know, move it around so they can see the gun and see the light, put the porch light on and ask them politely to, you know, go away, move on, go somewhere else, leave me alone, leave my home alone, leave my property alone. That was my thinking. But... Over the last several months, I've seen innumerable cases where people who have done that have gotten in trouble. Young McCluskey's in St. Louis came out with their guns. Now they did sort of point them, at least she did point at them at people. But setting that aside, they ended up getting prosecuted, not the people who busted through the gate and came up and threatened their house. Yet another guy somewhere in Milwaukee or Kenosha or someplace where they actually arrested him inside his house. They could, he could be seen walking around with a shotgun. Now, there's all kinds of complicating factors there. He may have been drunk or whatever. I understand all that. But if you look at other things that I've seen and you watch the news, it looks to me like what we're being told is first, if you're in trouble, the police probably aren't going to come to help you. And two, if you go out and try to deter, well, they don't look at it this way. You go out and try to show people that you're armed, hope they'll go away. You're going to get arrested for brandishing a weapon. You know, he came out and he brandished a weapon at us. You know, we're sitting outside his house saying, we're going to burn down your house, mf -er, you know, you racist or Klan member or whatever the hell they're yelling. And I come out with a gun and, you know, point it at the ceiling and I'll get arrested. That's the way it's starting to look to me. Now, this is where I think progressive policy fails. They're not looking at the dynamic nature of human beings and how they react. What is it that they're telling me? What they think they're telling me is I shouldn't defend myself. But that's not what they're telling me. What they're telling me is I shouldn't attempt to deter an attack on myself. 
What I should do is wait inside, get in my position in the car, get my ammunition stashed together, and anybody comes through the window or door, shoot them and kill them. Or at least shoot them. Whatever happens after that, who knows? I mean, that's really what they're telling me. Do not deter. Let them attack you and then shoot them. I don't really think that's wise policy. I think we'd be much better off if people used their guns to go out, let people know that they're armed, and let them know you go away. More than basically the way things are now, if they come up to my house, they don't know if I'm armed or not. And if they make the wrong decision and come through, they're going to get shot. I don't think that's as good an outcome as if I had gone out and, and deterred them by showing them that I'm armed and they need to move along or go away. That makes sense to me. It would be like being a, a secretary of state and saying, well, we're not going to use deterrence anymore. Somebody wants to attack us, we'll just let them and then we'll clobber them. I mean, th that, that would be nonsense as foreign policy. But that's the nonsensical policy that progressives are following in this country. They're telling people who are armed in this country. I mean, there are 350 million people in this country. There are, I think, 300, over 300 million guns. People say, well, you know, most people own multiple guns. There's only, you know, not that many gun owners, 100 million gun owners, but there are only about 130 million uh, families, homesteads in this country, which means you're probably looking at it, you know, 80 to 85% of them have a gun. So you could have a lot of this going on. And if you can't deter people and you have to wait till they come in, you're going to get a lot more shootings. At least that's my conclusion from my own personal experience. I'm not, I, I will call the police, the sheriff's department, but I'm not going to go out and try to deter anybody. I'll let them come through. If, if they come through, let them. I, don't, I can't stop them. If they come through, I'll shoot them. And I don't think that's really a good idea. But I don't have an alternative. They've denied me the alternative of deterrence, which to me seems downright stupid. But that's the problem with progressive policies. They, they look at a situation, they do one thing, and they don't look at the possibility that doing that thing will cause behaviors to change. Because that's what they're saying to gun owners in this country. Don't try to deter. Let them come in your house and then blast away. That's the message that they're giving us. It's a lot easier to defend yourself in court if you, you know, you're sitting in your house and somebody's come through the door and you shot them than apparently going outside, you know, showing them you have a weapon and telling them to go away. Because then you're brandishing. You're threatening. You make want to make a a mostly peaceful protest violent. And they don't seem to see, they can't look that extra step ahead. They can't understand that when they do something, you know, behaviors change. So let me know what you think in the comment. Subscribe to the channel. It always helps. Hit the notification button so you'll know when I post new videos. Give the video a thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. That's really helpful. And until the next time, stand tall confront the resistance, and keep fighting. I think I got the corner right this time. God bless you.